Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. We've got a lot of new updates in the world of Palantir today. Number one, we're going to be discussing Palantir's price action, taking a little bit of a nosedive here, uh, but I don't think it's that Palantir related. I think it's the entire market related, so we're going to talk about some of the stock action going on today and why the entire market is kind of tanking. Number two, we've got another piece of news on Ukraine. Yesterday, I showed how one of the chief executives of the Digital Ministry of Transformation in Ukraine basically highlighted on Twitter that they're loving Palantir. Today, we got another update on how Ukraine is using Palantir, and I think it further goes deeper into the fact that Palantir might become a really crucial component of the reconstruction of Ukraine. Uh, next, we have Palantir naming nine new partners for FedStart. We're going to do a little bit of a recap of what FedStart is, why it's so important, why it is a massive industry literally proven by the numbers, the billions of dollars that are flowing into these startups and how Palantir is trying to capitalize on that market. Really a new revenue stream that I didn't think they had a couple of years ago and now probably going to be more available to them in 2024 on their earnings reports. And then finally, a new partnership with Allen Industries. I've never heard of this company before. Just yesterday, they posted that they're partnering with Palantir. So we're going to talk about why they're partnering, what the partnership is, and why it's important. Let's get into it. Okay, before we go to price action, one thing I want to do every day, which I think will be kind of fun, is a comment of the day. So uh, any comment that I think is fun, interesting, funny, just a cool comment from yesterday's video, I'm going to highlight at the top of the video. Here we go. Just got home. This is from convict uh, underscore surgeon fish. Just got home, tired, cold, alone. The fridge is empty. The lights flicker. Perhaps a meth head lurks in the corner. I grab a burrito and open my laptop and go to YouTube. This pops up. Daily pound tier. Let's freaking go. I just I, I just pictured that whole scenario of that person coming home, you know, you're just alone. Everyone's been through that scenario, right? Where it's cold, you're, you don't you don't have really good food, you're tired, blah, 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 blah. And then you just turn on YouTube, that video you want to watch pops up, and then you watch the video. I have that feeling all the time. So thank you to Convict Sur uh, Surgeon Fish. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. And I'll be doing comment of the day every day before price action on these episodes. Now, price action. So S&P 500, 432.41, uh, down 0.83% of the day, basically down 1%. Palantir, it actually hit a high of 18.22 today. Uh, so it opened kind of red around 17.80, then jumped all the way to 18.22, and then it got sold off pretty dramatically, down 2.3% at 17.43. The reason I think it's down, and as you can see, SoFi is down 7.83, down 5%. Uh, United is down, Delta is down, Tesla is down, Tesla's earnings today, Tesla down a nasty 4% before their earnings, is because of one main reason, and that is that the U.S. 10-year has continued to spike today to yields that we saw a couple of weeks ago when the S&P 500 was down 10% moving towards this 200-day moving average of 420. The last time we saw the 10-year at this high of a level was during that time. 4.889, if you round up, basically we're at 4.9%. We were at 4.9% about two weeks ago. So we got the yield down to 4.5 and we thought, all right, equities were kind of capitulating to the bottom. We were kind of in, in a way to move forward. And uh, then the Israel Hamas at attack happened. A lot of different catalysts happened over the past couple of weeks. Um, CPI came out, really was unchanged, 3.7% month over month from August. And so there wasn't really that much of a reduction in inf inflation. Gas prices went up back to the $90 per barrel range when it was at 84 just a couple of weeks ago. And so now we are back in a scenario where the 10-year yield is giving you 4.9% on your money which means it's harder for that money to go into stocks. Quick TLDR for those that are unfamiliar with what that 10-year yield is. Essentially, when you're buying a 10-year treasury bond, you are giving money to the government. You are buying their debt. The, the government is taking your money. So the US government will take your 100 grand. They'll finance their operations and they will promise you in a 10-year contract to give you 4.9% at this point of a return on your money. And well, that's pretty awesome because that's basically 5% of my money for doing nothing. And the reason there is no risk here is because the U.S. government's not going to default on their debt. I mean, that, that's kind of the assumption. That's why the Bank of Japan is a large owner of U.S. debt. That's why people like buying U.S. debt versus Venezuela debt or El Salvador debt because you know the U.S. has the biggest economy, the best military in the world. They're not going to default on their debt, or at least that is the assumption. So if you're getting 5% on... Uh, treasury bonds, why would you take a risk and invest in something like United, which is down 8% today because their CEO said the fourth quarter is going to be bad given uh, flights to Tel Aviv, which is a mass, massive tourist uh, arena, is not going to happen anymore because of the attacks that are going on in Israel. And so, you know, I take a risk on United. I think it's this innovative company. I think, you know, at least airlines, I can get, a, you know, a little bit of a return. It's down 8%, whereas I'm getting 5% for doing nothing. So the risk to reward when a 10-year is giving you 5% versus investing in the stock market is just tough. You really need a growth stock to actually grow and produce returns. And that is the logic, really, for investing in companies like Tesla, Palantir, et cetera. But those companies can't do that well if money is not flowing into the market and unfortunately if money is flowing into those 10-year yields or those 10-year treasuries and getting a better yield 
then it's going to be harder for money to go into the market. Pounder is still $17.40, amazing price action. We broke out of that kind of $15 level. I don't know if it's fully safe for us to say we're now in the 17s. I think it'll take a couple more weeks of like really staying at this level, uh, but it is down today at 2.5%. Okay, next thing we have is Yulia, who is one of the ministers of the Economy Development Center of Ukraine, who tweeted something out today that I thought was really interesting. She says, amazing news, Pounter will be partnering with the government of Ukraine in analyzing humanitarian demining data. This means we'll use AI to process vast data, make decisions, prioritize tasks, and accelerate the demining efforts in Ukraine. Again, yesterday we talked about how Ukraine is going to be able to use Palantir in a variety of different operational uh, elements on the battlefield, but also in terms of rebuilding schools, things of that nature for the entire reconstruction. Now you're seeing another head official in Ukraine say, hey, we're using Palantir. They show some videos of fragmented data structures and how it's related to each other and how Palantir's ontology puts it all together. Uh, they write, the second photo shows data layering on the platform, which allows for a comprehensive analysis of information and provides a complete picture for decision making. And then this is the final video that shows how AI can become a virtual assistant that generates quick analytical reports. Our goal at the Ministry of Economy is to ensure that the progress is in demining as fast as, prog as, as, fast as possible in technology. Huge thanks to the Palantir team for their invaluable expertise and support. Um, to me, Look, why is this important for a shareholder? We've known that we've been working with Ukraine for a long time. I have not seen, and I don't think any shareholders have seen money come from Ukraine. Maybe it's kind of factored into their earnings, but for the far majority of the past year, I don't think we've gotten a single dollar from Ukraine. I think we will start to see that money soon. You are not working on demining data, rebuilding schools, actually on the battlefield and operationalized workflows to and, and then not getting a single penny from that. I think that revenue will be coming soon. I don't know when that revenue is coming, but I would imagine in mid-2024, early 2025, we're going to have to see some level of a corresponding compounding effect from all the work we're doing in Ukraine, especially if all these officials are basically putting this news out there. You have to ask yourself another fundamental question. Why are these officials that are, you know, the top people in Ukraine that are trying to rebuild the entire country, um, actively tweeting about their partnership with Palantir. They don't really get much from that other than the fact that they get to show that, hey, Ukraine, this area that's been decimated from a war that everyone, that the entire world is, you know, doesn't really think can can become a global leader anymore, is partnering with some of the leading technological companies in the world, i.e. a Palantir. So they're using Palantir's brand equity to say, hey, we are using AI. We are using machine learning. We are in this new world of LLMs that everyone is talking about. We are the place to test your new technology because look at what Palantir is doing here. Look at all the fancy solutions we're creating. Look at all the terminals we're building on AIP Assist. We can actually build a country over again and we have a very innovative tech company helping us do this. I think that will be worth money. How much money is that worth? I have no idea, but I do think that's worth money. And eventually I think Palantir will benefit from that. The question is when that's going to happen. Okay, now here's the biggest news of the day. Palantir tweeted this on uh, LinkedIn. Well, I guess they linked in it. They didn't, they didn't tweet it, so it's a LinkedIn post. But here's what they said. By the way, they have 279,000 followers on LinkedIn, so not bad in terms of their reach on LinkedIn. Palantir is proud to support and empower a growing government tech ecosystem. FedStart turns the 18-month $2 million accreditation process, talking about getting IO Level 5 accreditation to be able to sell into the government so they know that your products are secure, into something that can be done in as little as six weeks. So a year and a half goes to a month and a half at a fraction of the cost. And then they say, we're proud to welcome all the different partners they have. Uh, we've done videos on some of these before. A Specter Ops, I did a video on a while ago and Calypso AI did a video on a while ago. Um, a lot of these do a bunch of different things in regards to tech solutions in particular for the government. Now, why is this so important? I think there's a couple of reasons. Number one, this is a new revenue stream that Palantir did not have, honestly, forget a couple years ago, I think even a couple months ago, in the beginning of 2023, they were not getting incremental revenue from clients that were paying them to essentially be the platform that those clients can then use to get accreditation. Why is accreditation so important? You cannot sell into the government unless the government can trust your products. Now, the government's willing to spend money on software products, even if it's a bureaucratic process, but they are willing and they've got deep pockets, unlimited pockets, taxpayer dollars, but you need to have all the security requirements in order to be able to do this. Palantir went through 20 years of lobbying and this and that to finally get the right accreditation processes. And they realized at the beginning of June when they announced this product that this makes no sense. Why are startups that are raising billions of dollars from VCs, and this is the kicker, 
If they're raising all this money from VCs, it's because VCs want to fund defense tech software startups. And if they're funding defense tech startups, then that means those startups need to have the accreditation requirements to be able to sell to the biggest customer, which is the US government. And as a result of that, they came out with this product back in June, June 21st, which is FedStart, helping SaaS companies do business with the government. And the entire idea was that they would be able to allow you to, within weeks, have seamless integration, accreditation as a service, usage-based pricing, do everything you need to do, incorporate LLMs and generative AI. Uh, again, they reported right here, US venture capitalists have agreed to more than 200 defense and aerospace deals in the first five months of 2023, worth nearly $17 billion. Uh, in 2022, I believe it was 34 billion in the whole year. So we'll we'll know what the number is by the end of 2023. But there are legitimate dollars going into this space for companies that can leverage AI, machine learning, all these new fancy forms of technology to be able to get the government to be more secure. Why does this matter more than ever? What is the most unique reason for companies to be doing this right now and for why VCs are funding it? Because of what we see going on in Ukraine and China and Taiwan and Israel and Hamas. I mean, like when we're seeing all this stuff happen, it is becoming more and more apparent that if the United States does not win in the battle for ideas around, you know, which democracy is actually going to allow their ideas to not only be sustainable, but be secure and protected and have the technology to back up that protection in a variety of different use cases. I mean, there's thousands of different ways that the government can continue to be more secure, especially our government in the United States. Um, then there's a lot of money to be made, not only from Palantir selling their services to the government. We saw they got a $250 million contract two weeks ago to just do research and development for AI and machine learning, which was a contract they had gotten a year ago for $43 million, up to $250 million for three years, $83 million a year, just because the government is recognizing how important this is. But all of these startups that are also trying to get a little piece of that pie, they're trying to get a piece of that pie for a reason. There is money out there and the government is willing to spend that money. And if that software budget continues to increase, as per the DOD, then there's gonna be even more money in the system. And I think this can be a, a really unique uh, incremental revenue source for a pound here. Now, is this worth hundreds of millions a year? I don't know. Is this worth tens of millions? Could this one day become a billion dollar business 10 years from now where FedStart is the go-to platform for every uh, defense tech startup to be able to use when it comes to pound here? We, time will tell, but the fact that they have nine partners, they launched in June, so they basically got a couple partners every single month and that they're actually able to get some money off of that Maybe that's going to impact Q3, Q4 earnings. Maybe that'll increase that growth rate from like 13% to maybe 14, 15, 18. Um, or maybe all of that's going to come in Q4 or, Q, or 2024. But regardless, this is really important. It seems like they're going in the right direction. And it doesn't seem like there's that many other companies in the world that are leveraging them being defense contractors to essentially become a platform for all the other companies that want to become defense contractors. Kind of like Palantir just taking a pick of a little bit of each of these companies' revenue because they're using Palantir to be able to access that revenue in the first place. All right, last piece of news today. Uh, this was posted on LinkedIn on October 16th by the CEO of Allen Industries. Um, I think some people found some links of Allen Industries working with Palantir, but this is the first time we actually got an official press release. Allen Industries has teamed up with Palantir for the purpose of integrating Foundry and good old AIP into our integrated intelligence solution. So here's what the CEO says. We're ecstatic to unveil our collaborative endeavor with Palantir Technologies, a titan in the realm of data analytics and AI to add their Foundry and AIP platforms to Allen Industries. This pivotal milestone propels us and by extension our clients into a new era as we launch our integrated intelligence service. What do they do? Uh, ubiquitous, ubiquitous data integration. AI-driven analysis, real-time insights, secure and governed AI, again, the security of making sure that that data is confidential is incredibly important, and cost-effective scalability. This is really interesting. I don't know what Allen Industries is. I've never heard of them before, but they're launching a uh, partnership by utilizing Foundry and AIP. So I went to the website and I was shocked when I went to the website. This is a company that does cleaning services. This is a company that will clean your office, okay? So they offer commercial services from floors and furniture to fixtures and ferns. We offer a complete line of services that meet the needs of a variety of office and buildings and spaces. They offer green cleaning so they can optimize the way your business maintains a green form of of, of clean and waste management. So for example, if you if you have a ton of trash in your business and you need to recycle it, right? I'm assuming they provide some services like that. And then they have restoration services. As soon as we get the call, our rapid response team gets to work assessing the damage and enacting a comprehensive plan that ensures immediate safety, limits further damage, and plans for your complete recovery when it comes to something being wrong in the, uh, in the business or in the office space itself. 4,000 employees, 40 clients, 30 years of an operation. I mean, being in business for 30 years is not easy. Uh, and their core mission 
is that they are a leader in the janitorial and res restoration services, and they want to support our customers to create clean, healthy, and productive business and learning environments. Cleaner floors, cleaner offices, cleaner restrooms, cleaner common areas, cleaner... Like, this to me was insane because I'm re I'm used to Pounder partner with all these elite tech companies, big Fortune 500 companies. I've never heard of Allen Industries. Seems like a decently sized business. And, and their logo is, we are your custodian. This is a cleaning company that is finding value in a centralized database of all their data uh, compartmentalized to be able to create data-driven insights, which is what Foundry is. And then on top of that, they're using AIP to actually be able to do prompt engineering around all that data, uh, utilizing Foundry in the back end. I thought that was just phenomenal. The fact that a cleaning company could be using Palantir's AIP and Foundry. And what I think that speaks to is the depth of how diverse this product actually is. Not just AIP, but Foundry and the entire value proposition from Palantir itself. I have no clue how Palantir got this client. I have no idea that some guy call up the CEO and was like, hey, do you but like, did they go to a boot camp? Like, I don't know what the sales process was like to find that company as a lead, but you got Allen Industries that does cleaning services wanting to use AIP and Foundry. And so what it should signal to as a shareholder, whether, you know, this is a million dollar deal or a hundred thousand deal or a $10 million deal, whatever it may be, it shows that there is a shot for them to not only expand to a variety of industries, but also for them to go to SMBs. And small businesses has not been a concern for Palantir for a very long time, obviously because Palantir has been, uh, you know, mainly focused on figuring out how they can get to the biggest companies in the world. But if they can produce a product of Foundry and AIP, a commoditized version for small businesses, I think there will be a massive market opportunity there. It just comes down to how well they can execute, which begs the final question of today. Um, Palantir's partnerships have been buzzing. If you could choose the next industry they should dive into, which one would it be? Let me know in the comments, which one would it be if you could choose? I commented that semiconductors would be a really interesting spot if they could optimize and make it better. We got some people talking about real estate. We've got pizza delivery. <laughs> That's up there. Congress, budget recommendations, general logistics around uh, different things, package delivery, agri agriculture. We got other people having interesting ideas, transportation. So let me know what you think, given if cleaning industries could be a, you know, way for Foundry and AIP to scale, as we're seeing with Allen Industries, what under what other vertical do you think is out there that exists that Pounder could get into that they haven't got into? Another one is financial services. They really have not dived deep into that industry. I think their biggest industries right now are supply chain, energy, and healthcare, and obviously the government. But there's a lot of industries left out there. And if they can get clients like this, I can only imagine what clients they could get in the future. All right, that's it for me today. Thank you guys so much for listening and watching. Again, I am loving this new format, putting everything together. And from all the comments I'm seeing, it seems like people like this format. It seems like it's really easy to watch, really easy to consume. And um, I think it's a good format to keep going forward. So leave your best comment below. What industry do you think Pouncher should be in that they're not in right now or they're not really pursuing as much? And I'll see you guys in the next one.